Here at the Vermilion Alligator Farm, it's time to return these babies to the wild. It's all part of the alligator industry's sustainability, which has helped grow the population from under 100,000 to more than 2 million alligators today. Inside the facility, these luxury skins are headed to overseas destinations for luxury brands. Even with all these unusual factors, it's just like regular farming, according to Steven Sagrera. When, when we started the farm, I believe my dad started with roughly 250 animals the first year. And then over the course of the next 20 years, grew it up to that, you know, 70,000, as much as 80,000 animals on the farm in a given year. Um, and it's a very cyclical, it's like cattle, it's, it, you know, it's like, it's farming, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a very cyclical market. Uh, you, you get very high prices for two or three years and then the crash comes and you get very low prices for several years. The alligator industry has faced some setbacks recently. The COVID pandemic has crushed demand for skins. Normally they process 60 to 70,000 skins a year. The past two years they're down to less than half that. Uh, what we're experiencing now uh, with COVID-19 and with pan you know, the pandemic, very depressed prices, basically the market just stopped. We had something very similar in 2009 that we went through, um, but that was just a financial crisis. So everybody kind of knew how to handle it. This is a little bit different, uh, it's a little bit tougher. Here, Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries officials make sure that every tag is correct and registered. Similar policies are in place worldwide. We're regulated, you know, from the time we collect the egg to the time we sell the skin overseas. I mean, there's, there's steps all along the way that are monitored by U.S. Fish and Wildlife and or Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries. The public-private partnership isn't just about keeping the industry above board. 10% of all alligator eggs must be returned to the wild as adolescent alligators, well past the age when they suffer high mortality. That means the industry and the animals in the wild thrive. So annually, we, we give farmers permits, they collect eggs, incubate them, and when they come up, we come up with a hatch rate, they return 10% of what they've hatched at 48 inches long back to the wild. It's a sliding scale, so if it's slightly higher than 48 inches, they have to put back less. Slightly lower, uh, they, they put back more. The requirement for returning alligators to the wild size-wise is 36 to 60 inches, and she's a good one for surviving to help propagate the next generation of alligators, making this industry sustainable now and in the future. Reporting from Mouton Cove, Louisiana, I'm Neil Malasaw. Since Neil's story, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries has proposed reducing the amount of alligators returned to the wild from 10% to 5%. This is due to the success of the program, where once endangered, the alligator population is now starting to thrive. And also, be sure to check out our social media channels because there are some really funny bloopers of Neil holding that alligator, getting beaten by the alligator. Or just hold on for the end of the show. Yeah. Bloopers. Hold on. Okay, that's in there. That's in there, too. And I think there might be something that involved uh, a liquid as well. So. <laughs>